100,000 ninjas make it rain. FC Barcelona take a dive into esports. I am Katowice phase down. And Torbjorn's favorite daughter has broken Overwatch. All this and more coming up now, Screenplay League. To start us off this week in Screenplay League, Ninja, aka Tyler Blevins, has reached a colossal milestone in his career as a Twitch streamer. Now, Ninja is very famous for playing a ton of Fortnite. He was a PUBG player, a professional PUBG player by all accounts. He managed to win the ESL Invitationals. Uh, he's a former professional Halo player, multiple championships under his belt in that game, and he's just cracked 100,000 subscribers on Twitch. Now, the deal with subscribers, they're very separate to followers. A subscriber is somebody that pays you a monthly subscription to your channel. But the deal with this is Ninja's, as a top streamer, he's able to take home $3.50 of a $4.99 away from that. So this dude, in his mid-20s, is making $350,000 a month. Let that sink in. That's more than like most big wig evil corporate types make in an entire year. This is a terrifying prospect for a really young dude. I hope his family's got his back. I hope that he has like a good support network because I've watched him like break down on his streams and freak out when some guy drops 10K in him on, on intonations, which is already mind boggling. Am I jealous? Massively. That's a lot of money. I think what I would do with that much money is just like buy everyone I know a house. In other screenplay league news, FC Barcelona have just dipped their little footy toesies into the esports world. So Gerard Piquet, star player for FC Barcelona, has just basically grabbed himself an esports team, and that's a cool thing to do. That's in vogue right now, let's be honest. And naturally, they're sinking their teeth into Pro Evolution Soccer. Why Pro Evo, you ask? Answers on a postcard, please, because I have no idea. It's all good and well you've got these guys getting involved in esports, but Gerard Piquet has named the team, and wait for it, eFootball.pro. It's like someone went up to Gerard and they were like, okay man, it needs to have E in there because that's what we do these days. And it's a small E because that's what we do this way. But the, the, the F is big in football. And then you've got dot pro. And he's like, because that makes it sound like a website? Who let this get past anyone? This isn't the worst name to come out of like the, the merger between traditional sports and esports. Fernando Alonso has also named his esports team. And wait for it, I have to read this one because this. FA Racing G2 Logitech G. I mean, Jesus, Jesus. What? But I get you have to have the sponsor's name in there, but FA Racing G2 Logitech G. It's a corporate meltdown, man. Like, I just think these names suck. Let's keep them a little tighter, a little smaller, a little bit more fun. But hey, you know what? This is still a good thing because let's face it, big sporting companies, sporting brands like FC Barcelona, who are a tremendous juggernaut in the scene, it's good to have them involved. And this is alongside Paris Saint-Germain's getting involved, Melbourne City FC are getting stuck into the high end A-League and all that stuff. So look, it's all good for the football fans, but Pro Evo? So this weekend saw IEM Katowice taking place in you guessed it, Katowice, Poland. And it was a dream. It was a dream. One of the greatest Counter-Strike finals mankind has ever or will ever possibly see. Grand finals went down with Fnatic. Two-year drought. Haven't won anything since 2016's IEM Katowice going up against the FaZe Clan. And boy, oh boy, it went down to the wire. It was a time two years ago you would have rolled your eyes watching Fnatic win yet another event. Perhaps like a fine wine, it's gotten sweeter with time because they have to earn this one every inch of the way. JW finally silenced, but it's just Guardian and Olaf just Olaf! Comes. And Olaf gets paid back by his old team! Fnatic has done it! And that wasn't even the coolest clip we have because this entire series was a highlight reel in the making. Here is a clip from Guardian in a 1v5 situation. And, and Guardian is a FaZe Clan player, so you know, you know, he didn't even win. And this is what it looks like on the other side of the fence when this dude's get. If this guy's getting plays like this, what did they have to do to win? Round Guardian now is the question as to whether he'll save the AWP. Good flashbang, could get oh. a couple more out of this one. And oh. Fnatic are starting to crumble, what's going on? One player has found three kills, Guardian. Looking to ace this one out. This could be one of the best rounds of the entire tournament so far. Four kills picked up. It's down to Crims. This was a five versus one map. Down in position. Crims not looking yet. And Guardian oh just gosh. gets behind the box. That also means Crims will get closer to the site by the stairs. But Guardian will wait for this to go to time. Incendiary could be a factor because if he puts it in front of Guardian, how does he work back in? It's gone toward the dumpster. That means Guardian knows exactly where to look. Oh! And he's got all five! Every single round had some 
if not multiple, incredible Counter-Strike moments, mate. I don't know what the deal is. Is it because we played Counter-Strike for so long and these guys are just now so good at the game? Or because it's a game that's actually kind of centered around really exciting high energy plays and moments of like ridiculous drama. Bit of both maybe. So well, well, done, well done, Valve. You did good. You did good in stealing some other guy's game and slapping cash on top of it. You did good. Last piece of screenplay league news this week. Brigitte Lindholm, the latest character to Overwatch, has literally been live for less than 72 hours and the Overwatch community has already broken her. They've already found the most creative and destructive ways to take what was originally a support character and turn her into an efficient killing machine. Basically, players have worked how to cancel Brigitte's like left click animation, turning her into a quite soft, delicate, passive, friendly healer slash shield lady and literally turn her into a killing machine. You can see the clip on screen, like, that's a lot of hits. And don't forget that those hits translate into heals for your team. So you've just amped her up, you know, by canceling that animation, using the shield to literally turn her into the freaking Terminator. Now this is cool because I love seeing communities get involved and break games. And I love the fact that Blizzard, they put her out in the public test realm so that you can test her. They basically get, you know, a couple million players jumping on and stress testing and like, and, you know, and basically building the character from the ground up for them. The problem with this, this was definitely not how she was designed to be used. Definitely not. Check out this clip from Twitch. M making, making the Swedes fly. <laughs> you oh can totally my do it, God. Can totally do it. This what character is amazing. You can do shield jump. Oh my, oh my Lord. Oh. And the good news is literally within a matter of moments, Blizzard patched that shit and fixed it all up. Thank you, Blizzard. Don't forget this week to check out all the Overwatch League action that's going down in beautiful Burbank, California. Here's the table. Look at the table. Mmm, table. Oh, London Spitfire, still doing good. Still in the running. That's what we like to see. Nick's beloved Excelsior, eh, they're okay. Soul Dynasty, they will probably win it by the end. And now to join me to chat about glitches in games and whether they're a good or a bad thing, it's Rogi! Hey, man. Hey, Mars, <laughs> back on, buddy. Oh, dude, good to have you. All right, man, let's, let's, get, let's get, you know, knees deep into this one. Yep. Bugs, glitches, features. Whatever uh, you call them. Whatever you want to call them. Sometimes this is a really cool thing in a game. Sometimes this is something that really enriches a game, particularly in a competitive sense. Sometimes it flat out breaks it. Any good examples? Well, you yeah. give us a face. I mean, <laughs> like the Halo BXR or the double shot. Some, some, some bugs and glitches or even exploits, depending on where you look at them, can really make the game yeah. and make it much more competitive for everyone playing. The cool thing about like the BXR, so, for context, the BXR, you literally had to press B, which was the melee, As X, name suggests. X was, was the reload, and then the right trigger. And yep. that melee cancel shoot meant that you could get an instant kill on somebody up close. This is super hard to do, because if you do it too fast, nothing happens. If you do it too slow, you end up reloading. So you have to actually get the timing down on this thing, and that's something that, like, a, a skilled player... Oh, not to mention you have to aim the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you have to be doing multiple inputs. And yeah. if you watch a bunch of speedrunning games, it's like frame perfect, and that's essentially what it is. You only have a few seconds or milliseconds to hit those inputs correctly, to cancel your animations, meanwhile, avoiding all the nonsense and damage that's going on in a high stress game, yeah. whilst keeping a bead right on the head. Yeah, you be 100% on that dude's head. Like, and, and also- It's tough, it was tough. It's super hard to do that. So I think in, in a way that, and, and between like, once we've, dude, don't get me started on Halo 2, like the amount of glitches in that game that actually enhance the competitive experience, yeah. like the double shot meant that you could fire two bursts of a weapon at the speed of one, which was like a really quick and cool way to that finish was, off a kill. And, and that input was, it was like trigger trigger X. Yeah. So you would buffer the reload to get six shots out in your battle rifle. Then you'd have to press Y twice to cancel the reload to draw out your secondary, then pull out your battle rifle again, then trigger trigger X, Y, Y again. And if you could cycle that, you'd yeah. essentially be shooting 12 shots in the span of six. I will say I was really good at doing that. As I don't kid, believe But now you. these hands are literally ruined as a result of that It one. was tough. It was really tough to do, but again, that adds a lot of competitive merit to the game because yeah. again, that's like, that's like learning a really, really complicated, and I mean like super complicated combo in a fighting game, for example. Um, yeah, that's a good way to look at it, really. Yeah, it's, it's a combo that you wouldn't have otherwise, but like, I get why game devs go, oh man, like the first time they watch somebody like fire <laughs> like 40 shots in a second. I can they're just like, imagine they're like, what's going on? Shit. Not intended. Like, shit, not intended. But then like, when you realize how hard that is to do and how like, that really does only inhibit, uh, like, I suppose it affects a smaller portion of yeah. the community. But I get why like, they want to make bigger changes. Like let's say with Fortnite, the double pump feature, oh. whereby like, if you have two pump action shotguns, like the pumpers in your inventory, you can fire one and then change to the second one and fire it instantly. And like, you know what Fortnite's like? It's a, that's a high-powered weapon, yeah. that, and you change weapons so quickly. Therefore, 
that's a bit of an advantage. Yeah, they needed to add a global cooldown to as many pumps as you have in your inventory. So it was a quality of life change. I see that as it's like, sure, that was probably not intended as a bug or an exploit, but it was annoying. It wasn't fun to play up against and everyone's doing it. So I see that as like a quality of life. Halo 2 is one of the greatest games of all time. Oh, I agree. Like, I totally agree. Change your multiplayer experience for me. And if you take away a glitch in that game, like the grenade reload glitch, whereby like, if, as your character's animated, it was throwing a grenade. If you hit the X button like twice, you just kind of, I haven't mashed it. Just mash it? You just mash the X button just while your character your was throwing. Yeah, pr <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> your weapon would reload in the, during the, re the animation of the grenade throw. So, so you're, you're like- doing like two actions, one animation. At the same time, and that speeds up the game in a really, really cool way. So like, especially if you're playing in a free for all or even in a team setting, yeah. like- Every second just, counts, right? Every second counts. And you've, re you've just increased like a little tiny addition to the game that the developers oversaw because let's face it, man, it's clearly very tough to make a game. Yeah. I mean, while we're on the topic of like uh, exploits that can speed a game up and we're in that like first part of shooting competitive sense, look at Gears of War. Gears of War 1 had the weapon sliding mechanic. There were two versions of this, interestingly enough. The first one was you'd walk in, pick up the weapon, you would hit X to pick it up, you'd hit left bumper, which essentially did nothing in the game except bring up this little black and white overlay oh, yeah. and kind of showed you where your teammates were, but very poorly. Tatcom! But if dog. you go, yeah, the Tatcom, right? If you go X Tatcom A, Jesus. you would buffer the input of the reload, uh, the, the pickup, and it would do that animation, so like kick up the weapon, pick it up, but you're just like sliding around like that. It looked ridiculous, and it was. And then when they finally got rid of that, they couldn't get it completely rid of it. Because now, what you could do is if you like slid your thumb down X and A, not simultaneously, but in quick succession, you would pick up the weapon and instantly cancel the animation into a wall slide. So like, again, you have to be really, really good at that. That's oh, like yeah. Guitar Hero level, like, button the, the timings. First, the first one was definitely much more difficult than the second one. The second one was a pretty average, uh, like, technique to pull off. It eventually just, uh, in competitive, like in MLG Gears 1, it was like, hey, if you do it, sure, go for it. Yeah, Because yeah. it wasn't as bad as the other one. The other one would let you slide out of kind of like the middle of the map where the weapons were and get behind cover. This one you were forced to at least uh, commit to mm. the weapon slide and the pickup. So you're still stuck on that wall for the entirety of the duration that you're picking up the weapon. See, that's cool because again, there's a there's a reward there in that like you eliminate, you shave like really, really precious seconds off of an animation. But like the, the risk is if you fuck it up, you're done. You're literally you're like out. standing in the middle of a field. And this is a, this is a one life per round. So yeah, if you mess up, you, you're done. That you're totally dead. screws things See up. Ya. Like you were saying, you brought us you brought us up earlier where we were talking about wave dashing in Smash Brothers Melee, oh, yeah. which makes the game like I remember the first time I played somebody who knew what wave dashing was, and I was like, I'm quite good at Smash. Like I know how this everybody shit thinks works. they're good at Smash until they verse someone who's good at Smash. Yeah, when you and like watching <laughs> somebody wave dash is like it's like watching Neo. The first time he gets the, yeah, 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 he yeah, understands yeah. that he's the one, he and you're just like, matrix. what the. And of course, for those of you at home who don't exactly know the technicalities behind wave dashing, it's when your character jumps, you instantly put that into a dash, which is the shield when you're on the ground, but hold the directional input in like a downward diagonal, which then dashes you to the ground. So you're jumping, shielding, and putting an input all in the span of like half a second, multiple times a second to traverse the map in no time at all. Like, uh, it's we're, insanity. We're gonna really find is. a clip of someone's hands doing a wave dash and like watching someone like Mewtwo King wave dash is yeah, just have you seen, like, their, it's ridiculous. Have their GameCube controllers after yeah. the amount of strain they put on those things? Dude, and they still play on them. It's got like no rubber on yeah. the front. The plastic is tear that. Nah, this is my special controller, man. This hands is my lucky are, controller. Hands are bloody. <laughs> but dude, that's the, that's the thing. with When you take away a mechanic like that, which turns Smash Brothers into this like lightning fast, ridiculously high skilled, yeah. competitive fighter, fucking Smash Brothers brawl. Not only did Nintendo purposefully take it out, but then they introduced the trip mechanic. The trip mechanic. So like, the trip mechanic is like, if you try to wave dash as like a... Fuck you to the competitive community. I mean, yeah, we were talking. You fall over. Yeah, we were talking a little bit around like you know patching uh, bugs yeah. or glitches in a game. They just went out and made a whole new game, and we're like, no, you can't have that yeah. stuff that you enjoyed. You can't have that. So you can imagine the uh, uproar of the dedicated community who was so keen for a game like Brawl. The wave dashing removal for me, that's screwed up. No, I agree. There's, there's, there's. You, you got to understand just what the glitch, bug, exploit, quality of, quality of life change is actually having it as an impact on the game. Like you can look at positive ones. So something fun like the BXR or the double shot. Then you can look at super negative ones like in Hearthstone, for example, uh, back, this was ages ago, but probably the biggest fundamental bug that ever came out in Hearthstone was surrounded by a card that everyone thought was useless. Nuzdamaru. It's a nine mana, eight, eight dragon, which reads when you play this, 
both players have only 15 seconds to take their time. Normally, you have a minute and a half. So you can imagine the stressful situations this puts you under. And of course, people would only play it for fun because it's not really a big deal. But Hearthstone, cards have animations because it's a computer game, right? You want it to be nice and flashy. So they would get Nosdamaru, then they would get a card called Youthful Brewmaster, which reads, as you play it, you place a card from the field back in your hand. And that's got a long animation. The guy comes out, he's like, hey, what's going on? Throws a barrel over at old mate, throws him back. And you just cycle that over and over and over again until you're out of mana. And what that does, what that did was it chewed into your opponent's turn time. So the second that you hit end go, their turn will be over and it's straight back to you. And you're like, you just like, Yeah, you're just sitting there watching the game play itself yeah. at that point. Yeah. That, has, that has broken the game. Like, that's a really important bug to you get rid of. You use PvE at that stage. I mean, like, there's some things that quality of life, when it comes to things like Fortnite, and uh, tuning little things in games as well. Like, we talked yeah. about the Mini 14 in PUBG. Yeah. When that first came out, it was way too accurate. Way too accurate. And the the, tune, the tuning and the tweaks made there do end up improving the game in the long run, but that's not something that like is going to break the game, and especially no. in those battle royale games where the relationship between weapons is is kind of frayed because there's random drops. It's not like everyone starts with this weapon; it doesn't have too much of an impact. But you're saying about League, like oh. League of Legends, when you make a change to a character, if there's like a bug or an exploit in a single character, the ripple on effect there is going to be game breaking in some way shape or form yeah. so i've been playing league since like season one and there have just been so many times where even the slightest change to a character you give them like five more armor five more start like base ad on level growth attack damage and that just spirals the game out of control and there's it's just these fine little tweaks that you don't even think about and you know nerf a character here buff a character there and all of a sudden one that's unchanged will reign supreme and you know, Riot usually take around like three to four months to do a patch, and now that character is just going to wreck face and ranked in solo queue for the rest of the week. <laughs> you can see. Rain supreme indeed. Max, thanks very much for coming back in and chatting about bugs and glitches. I want to go home and play the Master Chief Collection, a bit of Halo 2 because the bugs are in there, but you can't get a game because they shit the bed on that one, didn't they? Didn't they shit the bed? No, that's a bug. That's a bug. <laughs> uh... Ah, my heart. Ah. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Screenplay League. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Get in there and throw some shade around about your favorite devs, ruining the games that you love to shit on people online on. Also, watch these videos. And turn your notifications on. Please, 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 please. We watch. need those views. We need those views. Also, watch them while they're hot and fresh. Oh, and subscribe. Big button below. Get your dirty fingers on that if you're using a touch device. Mmm. Esports. <laughs>